Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a wipeout course that I've been working on. And we're probably going to break this up into a couple different videos, where in each video we take a look at a different part. So let me go ahead and give you a quick overview, and then we'll get started. Okay, so the course so far has a couple different parts to it. And then the part that we're going to be focusing on today is at the very beginning. And instead of trying to explain it, let me go and just start the game and I'll show you what it's like. Okay, so this is the starting area and let me go ahead and move on to the first challenge. Okay, so the first part is a punching wall. So these red parts will extend out from the wall and then go back in. If you touch one of these, it pushes you into the water. So you have to try to walk by it without getting knocked into the water. Oh, almost made it. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can make this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so this is the section of the course we're going to focus on in today's video. So to make this, what we're going to do is start with the large part you see in the background. So if you add a part into the game, basically all you're going to be doing is resizing it. So just make it into whatever shape that you want to do for your wall. So something like that would be fine. And then what we're going to need to do is make these holes that you see the red parts in. To do that, we're going to be adding another part into the game. Go ahead and resize that to whatever size you want for the hole. And then what you're going to do for this one, you're going to go ahead and click on it. And then up here at the top under the model section, you want to click on the button that says negate. And this is going to turn it somewhat transparent. And then before we go too much farther, let's go ahead and make a copy of this part. So you can either press Control D or you can right click and then press duplicate. And then let's go ahead and just move that part away a little bit so we see the two parts. For the second part, what we're going to do is we're going to click on it, go back to model, and then press negate again, and this will turn it back into the regular part. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the second part and make it slightly smaller than this one. So if we go back to model or home, and we press on scale, go ahead and just make it a little bit smaller. So there we go, that should be good. So it's a little bit smaller than their other part. So the reason for that, we're going to make sure this one fits inside of this one. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this one that we negated and I'm going to move it inside of the, the wall here. So just go ahead and move it right inside like that. And then you're going to make sure both this part and the wall are selected. And then after that, if you go under Model, you're going to press the button that says Union. If you do that, it's going to combine the hole or the negated part with the wall, and then it creates a hole that you can stick your other part into. So very quickly, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and just take this one and change the color of it. And then all we're going to do is make sure that it fits inside this hole here. There we go. So something like that would be fine. Um, if you're just doing one or two parts, that might be okay. If you're going to be doing this a lot of times, the better way to do it, and let me go ahead and just go back a few steps. There we go. So instead of taking this first one and combining it with the wall right away, what you want to do is make a couple copies of this part. by pressing either control D or right click and press duplicate and then once you have the number that you need go ahead and get them lined up where you want them on the wall okay so something like that would be fine you can arrange them however you want to after that you're gonna stick them all inside of the wall just like that. So what you can do is you can start by clicking the wall, hold the control button, and then select all the other parts. 
And then once you do that, you want to go under model. And like we did before, you're going to press union. Okay, and once you do, then it'll make the holes in the wall for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one of the ones I've done before. So I'm just going to click on this one right here. And then I put two different scripts under this block here. One of them is for the punching. So when it touches a player, it pushes them off to the side. And the other one is for the movement of the block. So let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the punch part of it. And I'll go ahead and zoom in. All right, so the very first line up here is kind of standard. You're just going to say local part equals script.parent. And then right here, we're doing a touch event with a function inside of it. Uh, this first part right here, it checks to see if whatever it's touching is a humanoid. If it does see that it has a humanoid part, then it's going to run this line of code down here. So what I'm referencing first is the player C frame, which will control the position of the player. And on the other side over here, what I'm doing is I'm changing its position. So as long as it's touching that block, it's going to be adding three to the X position, and that'll move the player to the right. If you're going to set this up with a different orientation, so for example, if it's facing a different direction, you may need to adjust where this number goes here. Okay, but this is the basic setup for it. And like I said, if this is facing a different direction, you may need to change where this number right here is located. So you may have to put it either in this position or in this position right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the other one now. Okay, and just like the first one, we have this part right up here. And we have the other part in a while true loop. So what it's going to do, it's going to pick a random number between 1 and 3. And this will be the wait time, so it's not going to be the same every single time. It'll pick a wait time between 1 and 3 seconds. Okay, this first line right here is going to extend the part outside of the wall. And then the one right below it will return it into its hole inside the wall. If you want to change these numbers right here, this controls how far out the, the part goes. So depending on your size, you may need to make this bigger or smaller. And then whatever you choose for this number, it's going to be the exact same down below, except with a negative sign in front of it. Okay, and that's really all there is to it. So quickly, just to go over this one more time, the first thing you're going to do is just make a part that's going to be your wall. You're going to choose another part that you're going to negate by going under model. Once you get the number of parts that you want for the holes, you're going to group everything by pressing union. After that, you're going to be creating separate parts that are a little bit smaller than the holes in the wall. And under those parts, you're going to be adding two scripts. So one of the scripts will be controlling the punching part that moves the player off, site, off the platform. And the other part will be controlling the actual movement of the part. Okay, so this is going to be the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.